all right horns up guys welcome to the live stream and uh, very happy you could all make it great to see you all i hope you've all been doing well as always let me know which part of the world are you watching from i love to know now this live stream is gonna be in three parts uh it's very important oh i forgot a very important thing my cup hang on so i'm gonna first make my dinner because it is 9 p.m in india right now and i haven't eaten dinner i just got back home from my workout i went for a long six kilometer walk and here i am now making dinner now you might be asking me what is for dinner sahil what are you eating today i got a few things i made this uh, corn salad yeah this is just some corn there's a little butter, cream cheese, egg yolk, onions, coriander, uh, spring onions and lemon. And it's just a lovely, nice corn salad. So I'm going to have some of that. I've got some sourdough bread. So I'm going to have a sourdough toast. And I think some scrambled egg will be good with that toast. And I got some duck breast smoked duck breast from Bangkok Dipti picked this up for me it's sugarcane smoked duck breast can't see the pinkness of it let me see if it uh, ah yes you can see the light better now yeah look at that it's a lovely why are the shadows so weird anyway it's delicious so whoops yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is get my dinner ready. And once I finish cooking dinner, we'll sit and have a chat about stuff. And then we're going to make fish, vegetables and fried rice. Three dishes all in one episode. Because tomorrow is Monday and as you all know, I love to meal prep. So fried rice, some uh, fish and some vegetables and oyster sauce and that's going to be my lunch every day so prepare it in advance calories macros all worked out perfect so let's get started okay always store your sourdough in the freezer slice it put it in the freezer and whenever you want to remove and eat it remove and eat it so that's a big enough slice. So now let's get you guys a good angle of the stove here. Yeah? I think you should be able to see most things from here. We can get you guys a little closer. There we go. Yeah, so you can have a bird's eye view of what I am doing. So the first thing I need to do is get my cast iron skillet turned on. Right, and we got a, a little bit of butter. Fall down butter. Now spread the butter in the shape of the sourdough slice. Yeah, in the shape of the sourdough slice. There we go, getting getting there. All right, something like that should do. Let's get the bread on there. Let's mop up all that. Turn the heat down on low. I've got one of these things to weigh down the bread. Yeah, so that's gonna weigh it down and it's gonna toast. Meanwhile, I want scrambled eggs. So, got a little bowl here. I think you can see it now. Let's get two eggs. Crack them into the bowl. One more. Excellent. Now, in India, most of us don't have dishwashers. 
so I don't want to wash too many dishes so I've got this non-stick kadai and I'm pretty much going to use this for everything I'm making because that's all I really need so the scrambled eggs in this the fried rice in this the fish in this the vegetables well the fish maybe not in this maybe the fish in that but yeah we're going to try and do that okay eggs are in and I'm going to put a little milk in that so a little milk in and the milk is just for like fluffiness and of course we need a little salt a pinch of salt a little salt That a nice mix. Whisk it. By the way, where are you all watching from and what are you eating? Or what are you eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, whatever your next meal is? Let me know. Yeah, so just whip that, whip those eggs. That's good. Now, let's get this on. Okay. Need a plate. Turn the heat down. Let's get a little butter. Let's get my spatula with the butter in. butter not too much I should be more than enough cool butter in the pan this toasting yeah that's toasting well all right we got butter in the pan let's move my plate here let's get the egg off this okay we can keep this here I guess fantastic now this goes into the pan and use the spatula to get all the egg out okay turn the heat on low and just give it a scramble already okay it's scrambling nicely just nice and easy now I like big curds in my scrambled egg I don't know if you guys can see the eggs cooking just give it a this is why I like the non-stick it's easy it doesn't make things difficult you get some nice big curds going scramble those eggs you know yeah needed all right those are looking nice let's get those done check the toast oh, still toasting <coughs> don't need the weight anymore all right the eggs are almost done lovely now I don't know how how do you guys like your scrambled eggs do you like them more creamy and runny or do you like them more firm? I actually, to be honest, like them firm. Like not like hard firm, but like, okay, this is it. That's where my eggs are. This is where they should be. I'm going to take them out in the plate. Get everything out of the pan. Might be a little difficult to watch me, I guess. I need a... Alright. Turn the heat off. And this is what I like my scramble to look like. Like that. Yeah, just kind of... 
firmish. Yeah, so it's a little wet, but not totally and not totally dry either. So yeah, let's check on the bread now. Keep this here. Bread, the bread. Okay. Turn the heat up a little bit. Get some color on the toast. Still, still needs a little color, a little bit more. Let's press it down. Press it down. You can turn the butter dish down. Cool. Let's press down on that bread. Turn it round. There we go. Get all the butter from the pan. Now while that toast is going, okay, I'm going to serve myself a bit of this corn salad. A couple of spoons, not too much. There, three spoons. Now the rest of this needs to be put away in the fridge. And I will eat it tomorrow. So got my spoon here always use the spatula so you get everything that's in the bowl i'm going to pack this away now oh yeah that's good so now i have salad for like the next three days as well nice corn salad and i eat some raw cucumber which i've already eaten off camera so that's pretty much my meal for the week different different things all right this is done Okay, let's take the corn salad and put it away. You know, you got to multitask in the kitchen. It's crazy. So many things to do. Right, is the toast done? Almost. Now, while that's happening, guys, here's the fish I've got. Now, this is, a, is shark fish. Now, it's not the endangered shark, but it's some local shark fish which i bought for the first time i've never tried it before so i'm interested to see how it turns out now i've cut it into like little pieces because i was going to put it in the gravy of my vegetables but i was like you know let's just be safe because i've never tried it and i don't know what it's going to be like so i'm going to pan fry it but i'm going to marinate it in a little bit of soya sauce and sesame oil and mirin so i just need to drain out a little bit of the liquid that's here Yeah, so I'm just doing that in the sink. Okay, that's great. So we got the fish here. I'm gonna show you like it's a, it's it's insane over here. Check this out. Yeah, so that's the fish there. That's the fish. I'm gonna put a little bit of soya sauce in it. This is just your regular soy sauce. Yeah, a little bit. It's it's a bit of a dark soy sauce. And then we got sesame oil. This is toasted sesame oil, just a little bit. And then we got some mirin. Yeah, so a little splash of this. Splash. There we go. And now just going to use this spoon to mix it. Just give it a nice mix in all of that. And now this can just marinate. In fact, I'm going to put this back in the fridge to marinate. Because in India, it's quite hot. Hopefully, you live in a country with a little cooler temperature. But like in India right now, it's quite hot. So I'm going to put it in the fridge. All right, that's done. All right, that's the marinated fish. And it goes in. Into the fridge. So at the same time trying to rearrange the fridge and my toast is now done look at that color definitely good okay the stove is off now this is my dinner plate i'm gonna take one two three 
and maybe one more four slices of the duck and that's my dinner plate we got sourdough toast we got corn salad we got e eggs and we got duck um i need some vegetables but probably tomorrow not today so now i'm just gonna move some things around from here so now i'm hungry and i want to eat but i need to move a few things around from here so i can make place to have a conversation with you while i eat my dinner there's not too many things around here scissors move them away let's move this let's move the rice yeah the rice can go and sit around here in the back and now i just need a chair and i can turn on the fan there we go all right let's rock and roll the cereal eaters okay all right guys fantastic excellent how are you all doing lovely to see you all right so that was oops hold on need to clean up as you work because you don't want a mess in the kitchen is this normal dinner time for you uh, ideally i like to eat by 8 30 8 o'clock if possible but when I do live streams, I, I extend my dinner time. All right. Great. Fantastic. Good. You are all here. Now, we chat while I eat. I guess that's the plan. So I've got my plate here. It's not a huge dinner. Uh, but that's also because I had a little evening snack. And I had a reasonably heavy breakfast. All right. So, I got my toast here nice singular piece of sourdough toast got my corn salad Ooh, that's good crunchy onions hmm bon appetit oh that's good let's get some of those scrambled eggs of course, toast. We got a piece of toast that's broken off. Mmm. And what it needs? A little acid and sweet to cut the richness. Now I know this might not be this might be sacrilege. This might be frowned upon in the culinary world. But as a child, I grew up eating scrambled egg on toast with little dollops of tomato ketchup. My grandmother would take white bread, put my scrambled eggs on top of the slice, cut it into four pieces and put little drops of ketchup on it. And that was my childhood. Till today, scrambled eggs for me, I love that little drop of ketchup on like every third bite. So let's get some ketchup. I'm sure I have some. If you give me a second, I will find the tomato ketchup. And I did. All the takeout places give you like these little sachets of ketchup. So we just take that and just drop little dollops over the scrambled there we go i mean you know if i was being fancy i would have like garlic chives or something parsley on the scrambled egg but just this little dollops of ketchup i don't think you can see it just little dollops mm really good because food and cooking and cooking rather all about balance right the eggs are rich you know the yolks are fatty there was butter in the scrambled a little milk and salt 
and then you have bread which has butter also not too much but there's a little butter so you know need a little bit of that acidity to cut through the richness because normally i have some vegetables or something but i don't have any today um where did you get the spicy hot dogs which hot dogs we talking to me Just drop the ketchup, the ketchup, drop. Cheers. Normally I would put the eggs on the bread and just, but today I feel like being a little dainty. And that's the smoked duck so you're gonna get a bite of the eggs put the duck on the bread and then put the egg on the duck a chicken egg on a duck mm. That duck is beautifully smoky and nice and meaty. Wow. So good. And now a little bit of that corn for the crunchiness and the vegetables. Yeah, all I would need is a duck egg scrambled. Mm. So even the corn, like the corn is sweet. Then we have the the cheese and the butter and the egg yolk, which I use the cured egg yolks in this. So that's rich. Then you've got the herbiness from the coriander, a little bit of crunch from the raw onions and then lime to cut through the richness. And that's what great cooking is about, is like balancing the food. So that even if you're eating something rich and fatty, you cut it with the acid. You don't feel sick after eating, you know. Like it's a lovely balance of flavors. And of course, if you like it spicy, let me know if you like your food spicy. Like you could put some jalapenos in this corn. You could put some hot sauce on the eggs if you enjoy spice. I don't like spice. I'm a spice wuss. Like I prefer to taste everything rather than be fanning my mouth. Ooh, duck l'orange. I should make that sometime. Like I, I'm more of a roast duck kind of guy. Like I love a nice roasted duck breast with a brown gravy and some rice. Ooh, heavenly. Do I ever get accustomed to the constant honking in the background? No. So I was very lucky that my old house, the one I grew up in, where I live with my parents, we were away from the road. So there was no, there was very little honking where we lived. And um, yeah, I mean, there were other things like, so for example, my house is on the beach, so there were a lot of aeroplanes that would go over. And that sound I kind of got used to, but I couldn't, I can't get used to the honking. Like even now, people in the middle of the night will honk. And it's fine when it's summer, when we put the AC on and we shut the window, it's fine. But like now it's winter-ish, so we keep the windows open and because the windows are open, you can hear a lot more. Because the windows in this house a fairly sound cutting so just quite a filling meal huh? I think uh, traffic and airplanes is just now part of modern life by the way this is amazing 
there are well there were 92 of you watching so if you can find the like button do smash it have i ever tried dal ghost or chicken mutton and sambar dal ghost regularly in fact i just made a recipe with uh, beef tongue and dal so that's pretty much like a dal ghost only it's just that i use like water buffalo meat instead um as as for sambar with chicken and mutton i haven't because i barely eat sambar but that is definitely something that i am intrigued about and i feel like uh, making a video on that probably a little bit of sambar with some mutton why not what am i eating so i'm eating a little bit of a corn salad scrambled eggs with a few dollops of ketchup smoked duck breast from bangkok sugarcane smoked duck breast and sourdough toast so i have a bite of this have a bite of this have a bite of this mm. yum and a bite of this too Bon appétit. And after I'm done with this, that's when the cooking is going to start, like the real cooking. So I'm making fish, vegetables in oyster sauce, and fried rice. Going to get some vada pav. All right, get yourself some vada pav. Now, I'm at the end of my meal almost. I'm going to finish the corn first. Tell us something you absolutely do not eat. I mean, as a uh, glorified home cook, as a food lover, I will try anything once to taste like meat-wise and stuff. What I won't eat. Oh yeah, I know what I won't eat. I will never eat that one chip challenge food. Misalpao. And I will I mean misal pav if somebody made it non spicy for me I would eat it. But I will definitely never eat that one chip challenge chip. I won't eat any of those like death wings like the chicken wings that will kill you. None of that. Anything that is extremely spicy I will not eat. I refuse to subject myself to that. I did it once with the hot ones challenge and never again. Have I tried making kare kare? I don't know what is kare kare. All right. Now the scrambled egg, whatever is left of it, oops, goes on goes on the toast. Put it on the toast. Get all of it. Give it a little smash into the toast. So it's spread out evenly. Put the duck on top. Ooh, oxtail in peanut butter sauce with veg. That sounds delicious. I will definitely look for it. Which country is it from? And let's get the last few dollops of ketchup on my scrambled eggs. All right. And now we come to the end of dinner mm. oh it's a filipino dish sounds yum will definitely look into it so yeah i dislike the chili spiciness wasabi is not spicy i don't find wasabi and mustards and peppers to be spicy i have the problem with the red chili powder the green chilies and like those chemical hot sauces that taste like paint cleaner brother are you religious no nope, i'm an atheist do not believe in any gods or religion 
have i tried authentic peking duck i mean if you mean in china in peking no bacon tarka t-shirt still available yes they are link in my bio i have i have not had like i've had peking duck at restaurants so yeah yes so no hot wing challenges for me no i mean you would have had to pay me a lot of money to do a hot wings challenge and even then it's subject to which hot wings we're talking about like i don't think any amount of money will make me do that one chip challenge no chance no can do and with that my dinner is almost over do i try street food no not really again too spicy for me so i prefer to not eat street food because of the spice levels i mean there are few places that i can handle and i'll generally order that home i would also love some peking duck right now speaking of duck this guy needs to go in the fridge let me just put him over wash my hands cuz i use my hands when i eat give me less than 30 seconds all right now i need some water and what about dessert Do you guys eat dessert? Do you like dessert? Where does dessert feature on your eating schedule? Let me know. I'm also cleaning up a little bit. Remember, clean up, clean up. All right, water first. Always stay hydrated. If I ever come to London please yes sure why not Excellent I don't really like vegetarian dishes for the most part Excellent Now I have this orange this is supposed to be my dessert But there are also eclairs in the house peel the orange this is a not the best batch of oranges but i don't like to waste food so unless it's inedible i won't throw it away but this is the last of the dozen so tomorrow i can get better oranges so let me ask you a question i mean i keep asking you guys questions what is your favorite food could you narrow it down to one and if not one could you narrow it down to three and ladies and gentlemen even though it was a very difficult orange to peel the one peel trick is back once again i have successfully peeled the orange in a single go without tearing the skin i mean like it's one skin could literally like make another fake orange just fill it up with some stuff okay maybe not 
the orange skin. Ooh, crepes, that's interesting. Mm. It's not sweet, but it's not like crazy sour either. Oh, that sounds interesting. Of course, guys, after this, after dessert, we're going to get back to cooking and we're going to make the fried rice. We're going to make the vegetables and oyster sauce and we're going to fry that fish as well. So I'm just getting ready. So I'll tell you what all I've got. I've got some broccoli here. So the broccoli is going to go into the veggies. I've got some duck. So you know the duck I was eating? Can you say Greta? I just did Greta. This is the duck skin and the duck fat. Check this out. It's got a smoky flavor. And then I've got some duck meat cubed up here. This is gonna go in the fried rice. Then we got some mushrooms here. Mushrooms, just some typical white mushrooms got the white part of a spring onion got some peas got some oh, ooh, pork choy here got some now this you might not realize what it is it's beef stock but it's one of those cubes Are you making dinner for Dipti or is this for tomorrow? Oh, this is for my lunch for the next five days. Almost. It's a meal prep. Dipti won't eat this. I mean, if she wants to, she's always welcome, but she doesn't really eat this stuff. What was up with that guy harassing you about speaking in Hindi the other day? Who knows? A lot of random people show up on these live streams because you find them in the shorts feed now. And for some reason, I mean... Every country has its own set of uh, nutcases who have certain agendas, so yeah. Thank you, just another brick in the wall. It is my pleasure. The orange. Almost over now. <clears throat> I'm eating not the ripest orange. It's my dessert. Prior to this, I had dinner, which was scrambled eggs, um, sourdough toast, corn salad, and duck breast. Thank you, Hoor Ibrahim. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Hopefully, look, in time with all the new videos I'm making, the channel will grow. So, yeah. You should put on some of your music to drown the honking. I do that pretty often. Orange is my favorite fruit. But I'm glad you guys are all here. We will start cooking soon. So if you have any questions before we start cooking, now's the time to ask them. Are you going to tour sometime soon? Unlikely. Where am I? I'm in Mumbai city in my house. Well, my rented house. Thank you, I appreciate it. Mm. Sounds interesting. Shout out my name. My name is Chole. Oh, Chloe. When is your new album coming out? No idea, but 
I put out an album last year, so go check it out. My musical name is uh, Demon Stealer. I do have a dog, but he's not home today. He's gone out for the weekend. <clears throat> Thank you, Missy and Taylor. Appreciate it. Yeah, so my dog's name is Miso. Hmm. How old am I? 41. Okay. We're going to try something. Hold on. Huh? Cereal. Eater. Excellent, guys. Hold on for just one second. Okay. Looks good. Yep. Now, I don't know if you can see it. But if you guys want to buy this t-shirt that I'm wearing, I have linked it below this video. Do you have any family members? Yes, I do have family members. Ooh, three adopted cats, two cats, but one got lost. Oh, no. I have a mother, father, brother, wife, in-laws, cousins. Uh, I mean, I live with my wife and my dog, but... Uh, thank you. I'm glad you like my voice. Give me a shout out, say Alpha Q. That's like a joke from like fourth standard. Can I have a shout out? The Informative Warrior Channel. All right, a shout out to the Informative Warrior Channel, whatever that is. Can you say Oha? What is with people wanting me to say random things? What's your favorite color? Black. Uh, Thank you, Abhishek. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yeah, I've been posting regularly for a while. Okay, what is that word now? Sotos, tills of... Never mind. What's next after Pizza Wars? Um, Maybe some Ramen Wars, maybe Turkish Egg Wars. Who knows? All right, guys. Now the orange has been eaten. Once again, look at my... One of my, one of the few talents I have in life, peeling an orange in one go. Now it's time to cook. All right, I hope you guys are ready. Bring out your spatulas and your pans or just sit back and relax and watch the show. Take notes. Um, most of these things that I make are pretty easy and not very complicated. So let's rock and roll. Favorite chocolate in the world? Probably Royce, the Japanese chocolate. Royce, I think that's my favorite chocolate. I don't really like chocolate anymore. Except that one. Like I used to love lint and arrow and all these different, different things. Oh yeah, you should start charging all you guys for the shout outs. I don't know, I just... Anyway, it's time for you guys to get onto the stand. Oh, cooking after a meal. Now, the good thing about cooking after a meal is that you're so full that you're not going to nibble on the food you're cooking. That's a good thing. All right. All right. Now I have an important question, guys. This is not a keto meal. This is fish. Vegetables and oyster sauce and fried rice. Now, here's an important question. Should I put egg in my fried rice? What do you think? And while you tell me whether or not I should put egg in the fried rice, let's make some basic stuff, okay? All right. So I'm going to do a few interesting things. Maybe this you can some tips for you guys. Your house is dirty as hell. Clean that shit up. Let me see your house, buddy. People who 
normally say things like that are generally the dirtiest thank you Denise how are you all right let's now this here is beef stock now this does not really look like regular beef stock because it looks very white and pale but it is a Turkish beef stock so I kind of picked this up when I was in Turkey so this is what it is yeah so this is what is in this okay so we got that now we are going to add a few things okay the most important oyster sauce because we are making vegetables and oyster sauce so just get about two tablespoons in of that oyster sauce that should be enough okay now we want a little bit of soya sauce and this is some good quality soy sauce a little bit of that in there perfect then we got some sesame oil yeah get a little of that in there and we get some mirin that gives the acidity and the sweetness and then I need some corn flour but where is the corn flour I have to find it now because I don't keep things in the oh, actually maybe I do oh there it is I think that's it uh, is that it yes that is it we have the corn flour fantastic so let's get the corn flour get a nice big tablespoon of corn flour add that in and now just give everything a good mix now this is our sauce ready to go okay now a bunch of you all said yes to the eggs so let's do it so once again I get my uh, the sauce is ready yeah so this is our sauce ready this can be put aside okay we got eggs right crack the egg into the bowl then we crack the next one all right that's the eggs cracked <clears throat> As usual, I'm going to put a little milk. It's just a habit I have of putting milk in my eggs. I don't know why. And then, of course, we need a little bit of salt, which is right here. Use the back of the fork to take the salt out. Just like a pinch there. All right. It's done. Now we can give these a whisk. Yeah. Now, now the interesting thing is this. is fat from the pandi curry now it's a little bit of a maybe i shouldn't use it because it's got a very strong curry flavor <laughs> maybe i should stick to regular oil for now but i like to use up stuff in my house maybe i'll, I'll do something else with this for now let's just leave it i think because sometimes you've got to realize when flavors sh should not be mixed Anyway, let's get cracking. Okay, let's get the pan on. Perfect. 
perfect. Got a little bit of oil I need. Alright. I'm gonna get you guys a better look. Let's get you up in front. Like I said, this is all about one pan. Don't want to have 20,000 different pans. So let's get. A little bit of oil in, a little bit of oil there, okay, just get it spread around, All right, now the eggs, which I'm going to get all the egg in. Now what I like to do is I like to swirl it around. Turn the heat down a bit. Sort of let the eggs just get nice thickness. Yeah, so you just create like a almost like an omelette in the in the sort of wok. done almost great and now we can scramble it get all of the egg out just cut it up into pieces done now I take this off take it off into the egg bowl all right there we go and we're done heat down a little okay are you guys able to see everything correctly is the wok mandatory for fried rice no you can do it in a frying pan as well a non-stick one no problem you guys okay you can see everything now it's time to make the fried rice so I'm using Ja this is a uh, sushi rice like a uh, short grain Japanese rice um, what I did was I cooked it in the evening put it on this tray and I put it in the fridge so it's dried out a little bit because otherwise it's not like day old rice so anyway I'm gonna put mushrooms and some garlic and some duck and oh let, let's just get started okay so here I have the duck fat and the duck skin so that goes in the pan okay now that's gonna slowly render out a little bit I'm gonna help it render by putting a little oil not much just a little just a little yeah just a little maybe a little more because it is fried rice I mean there we go I mean, but using the non-stick helps to keep the, like, the oil to a minimum. So now what's happening is that 
so now what's happening is that duck fat is going to render and crisp up and give us a smoky duck flavor for the fried rice okay i've got some garlic chopped here so we're gonna have some garlic in the fried rice and like i said we got some peas because i want some vegetables in the fried rice so i i i actually got the corn to put in the fried rice but then i was like i was hungry so i made the salad and uh, yeah see they can see it frothing up now in the pan look like it's proper frothing up like how bacon froths up so that's proper frothing in the pan the duck fat is rendering out and i've got so like i said garlic we got the white part of a spring onion i'm gonna put the mushrooms in the fried rice because i like mushrooms oh wait no i'll put the mushrooms with the vegetables and oyster sauce i'm getting confused ah and i've got the duck meat for the fried rice as well look at that oh it's becoming crispy rendering out wow i can already smell the smokiness because it is smoked duck breast and this is a great way to use all these different kinds of fat you know yes animal fat is very high uh, smoke point so you can use uh, bacon fat you can use duck fat you can use uh, beef tallow so all of them are good to cook with and here's the thing i like to vary things so that i don't get stuck using just too much of one thing because too much of one thing is never a good thing you know like so sometimes duck fat sometimes pork fat sometimes chicken fat how long have you been cooking uh, i started cooking when i was a kid maybe around 10 years old or 9 years old um so it's been a long time but i never trained professionally i just i mostly cook food that i would like to eat uh, it's only when this channel started that i started to learn different cuisines and uh, sort of learn indian food as well hello to everyone joining in good to see you all how are you doing i am just frying up little cubes of duck fat and skin so even the skin's going to become crispier now and there'll be little bursts of duck fat in the fried rice I am 41 years old now. So I guess I've been cooking for 30 plus years. Oh, excellent. Oh wow, you were in a hotel and restaurant. That's insane. That's proper cooking. Do you like K-pop? No, I'm I'm mostly into death metal. I'm not really into pop music of any kind except for pop from the 80s and 90s which I grew up listening to. Okay? check it out it's look at the froth the fatty froth all right now the white part of the spring onion did you quit keto yes 4 years ago rohan you'll be 40 in july well cool man do i live in mumbai yes i do i know you love britney spear i mean i like her song toxic it's a nice song it came out in the 90s if you remember I started cooking at 12. Amazing. Now good fried rice needs some garlic. Let's get that garlic in. Oh yeah. Lots of garlic. Nice. So I'm frying the garlic. Oh guys, the smell is amazing. Smoky duck and garlic. When will you make cannibal corpse kebabs? Whenever they come to my house. Do you like some Indian music? Unfortunately, no. I mean, I like Indian bands that play. Like I like Bloody Wood. They are an Indian metal band. Do you have any kids? No. Nope. I have a dog. If that counts. Oh yeah, the smell is yum. Oh, this is good. Oh that's nice lovely smell garlic i want to get the garlic like almost brown if you could move to mars would you all pets count uh no i don't think i'd want to move to mars do you have a vr no i don't 
so the garlic everything is cooking and so if you see the frothing the frothing is because it's duck fat so whenever you cook with animal fat uh, at least pork fat and duck fat and uh, stuff it, it tends to froth sometimes which is nothing to be worried about do you still work out yes i just did a six kilometer walk today so yeah i i do go to the gym as well but uh now i go like once or twice a week i need to up it but i have a few plans in place so let's see all right this is going on i'm gonna add in the do i add in the peas now or do i add in the egg? these are frozen peas so they're pretty much cooked they don't need any oh it's a little bitter Maybe I will cook the peas. Let's cook the peas also. Little salt. Try and season your food as you go along. Just like a pinch of salt here. Pinch and a pinch and a half. And guys, don't forget the MSG. MSG. And by the way, guys, MSG is completely safe. Obviously, if you have health issues, consult a doctor. But there's been a lot of demonizing of MSG over the years. Perfectly safe in moderation like most things. So a little, a little pinch of yum yum. You know that guy? A little pinch of yum yum though his yum yum is not just pure msg anymore what's the time it is about 10 pm now all right let's give that a mix i'm going to turn the heat up slightly okay now let's get the rice in the rice in did i drop any yes i did oops sticky rice it's sticky it's sticky it's sticky to my hand damn it just eat it okay we add the duck meat okay add in the egg And we're going to add in a little bit of soy sauce, evenly. Okay. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. Let's give you guys a bird's eye view. There we go. Yeah, get the rice nice and fried. Break up the egg. Look at it, it looks good. You use the back of your spoon to press the rice down and break it up. Get all those grains separate. And we can smash the eggs also into smaller pieces if you don't like big pieces of egg in your fried rice. There we go. Oh, yum. Break up the egg pieces, the big ones. Nice small chunks of egg. Yeah. Of course, you can do this in your frying pan as well. No problem. Make sure all the grains are coated in that soya sauce. And of course, taste it for seasoning. Okay. 
Okay, now for finishing touches, a little more sesame oil, just for like that insane flavor. And we're gonna put a whole bunch of spring onion greens. Oops, oh damn, I dropped that. Yeah. Because I had a lot of spring onions at home and I had to use them up. So a lot of spring onion greens go into that. And our smoked duck fried rice is ready guys. Now I can actually turn the heat off. That's very good. Thank you. Alright, that's our duck, duck fried rice done. There you go. Mmm. It's good. Needs a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. A little pinch of salt. And I'm going to throw in some sesame seeds. Just a little. Oh, yeah. A little bit of sesame seeds and give it a little extra dimension of tastiness. And that's it. Turn the heat off. Fried rice is ready. Added shots, the only advice I can give you is never do sub for sub. It's the most useless thing in the world. What is sub for sub? Sub for sub is when you subscribe to other channels and you ask them to subscribe to you because you want to increase your subscriber count. I thought it was food substitution. No, <laughs> but uh, the thing is you don't build a quality audience. Then you just have people who are desperate for subscribers subscribing to you. And then when you put out a video, they don't watch. And when they put out a video, you don't watch. So don't do sub for sub, it's a waste. Don't subscribe to my channel in the hope that you get me to subscribe to yours. Subscribe to my channel if you find value in my content. Yeah, if you like my videos and you want to subscribe, subscribe because I've learned one thing. Subscribers do not matter on YouTube. Yeah, they mean, they mean zero. You don't get extra money if you have more subscribers. You don't get extra views if you have more subscribers. I mean, just look at my channel. That's a good example of don't overthink subscriptions just make good content and if people like it great all right the rice is done now it just needs to cool a little bit and i will pack it up uh, meanwhile i guess i can i could fry the fish meanwhile Ooh, it is hot in here now oh, i did this entire recipe with the fan on no i guess it doesn't matter but Nothing, I mean the, the gas was still working. Great. I want to eat a piece of cheese. Yes, go for it. That's the last of the cheese anyway. Yes, it is the engagement. Actually, so in, on YouTube, for those who are interested to know, um, YouTube values, one thing is the click-through rate. So, if, for example, say I upload a new video, I put a thumbnail. YouTube say shows that thumbnail to 100 people. And if 10 people click on the video, that means it's a click through rate of 10%. So YouTube looks for a high click, click through rate on videos. So hopefully if you've, uh, if you've got an attractive thumbnail, that's the first thing they look at that. Okay. The thumbnail and the title are getting some attention. And then the next thing is how long do people watch the video after clicking? So if you have a super attractive thumbnail and everyone clicks, but the video is not good and they drop out in say five seconds, then YouTube says this video is not good. So that's why you need to watch full videos if you want to help a creator and you need to see their thumbnails and click on it. That's it. That's all that really matters. So for example, if you watch my video from start to end, YouTube is like, oh, that's a good video because people are not dropping out during the video and say hello to Dipti who's enjoying a nice drink and some cheese while I uh, cook. What are you having? I'm having a gin and tonic because it's the easiest. Right, so Dipti's having some gin and tonic and uh, a little bit of cheddar cheese. And that's a Sunday night. Can you tell Dipti, Hallo, Shone Frau? Hello, Shone Frau. 
vrouw. Schöne vrouw. Hallo, schöne vrouw. Vielen Dank. Whatever she said. Vielen Dank. Feeling good. No. <laughs> Many thanks. Oh, okay. I just waved at the screen. Did you see? Sorry, can you do it again? I'm looking now. Awesome. Thank you for the kind words. Say ciao bella. Is that how you say? Ciao bella. No? Is that not how they say it? Can I have the fan on? It's really hot. It is hot in the kitchen. Right, where's my water? And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> okay, fried rice done. Let's move on to the next thing. From the Netherlands. Hey, thank you. Appreciate it. Fried rice. So now I need... What? I want Oli Bolin. Oli Bolin, she says. I want. She wants Oli Bolin. I do not know what that means. I'm just saying things now as I'm being instructed to. Yes, so I need a box for my fried rice. I should taste the fried rice though. Even though I've had dinner. Now that I've... Where's my spoon gone? So this is the good thing about eating dinner and then cooking because I'm like so full right now. I don't want to eat any food, but this is just to taste. Hello from Scotland. Please send me some haggis. I love haggis. That's a good fried rice. That is a damn good fried rice. Warwunje. Now you're just messing with me, guys. Hey, thank you, Siddhartha. Uh, tell Dipti she should watch Dan VR. Okay. Ignore hate. I am completely ignoring hate. Okay. Before we get into all the fried rice box, then in the fridge. Let's get to it. Oh. I wonder if this box is big enough. You think this box is big enough? Looks like it'll be a tight squeeze, but we'll give it a go. So in India, we try and reuse all the takeout containers as like our storage dishes at home. You know, I know many of you are not from my city, but I've been inviting fans over to come and taste the food I make during episodes. So if you've been watching the the new videos on the channel, like I did uh, a whole bunch of recipes like bang bang prawns, bang bang shrimp, sorry. I did orange chicken, I did chicken karage. I recently did uh, big uh, chorizo pao bhaji and I just got fans of the show and like food lovers to come and taste it. And I also have like a foodie group with my other page, Headbanger Eats. I've been sending them some of the food also. So like when I cook extra at home, I actually just send a message on the WhatsApp group and ask them, hey, do you want to like have this food and like you can just send someone to pick it up. So I've been doing a lot of these cool food things. So if any of you are from Bombay, I mean, just make sure you follow me on Instagram as well. That's kind of where I make all these announcements and stuff. In fact, tomorrow I should be shooting a new video and uh, most likely I will be looking for people to come and taste the food. I think it's going to be smoked mac and cheese with uh, guanciale. Yeah. So how do you make a smoked mac and cheese without having a smoker in your house? Who are you all the way in Palestine? Well, I hope you are safe, my friend. And I'm sorry for what the world is doing or not doing. Ah, we got people from Ireland as well.
are you asking which country I am from? I am from India. Have I ever tried spasm before? Do you mean spam? If, if that's the case, yes, spam I have tried. I love spam. It's one of those weird and wonderful foods. It's like you should never know what's in your spam, but yeah. That's interesting. Spam the food is just like, you know, you're a mailbox. You really don't want to look in there. It's probably not a great thing. Those spam taste delicious. Hello from New York City. Hello, how are you doing? New York, one of the great food cities of the world with all the Michelin star restaurants. I have a lot of friends and relatives in New York as well. Hopefully someday I will make it to the States. Someday. Okay. The rice fit in the box perfectly. Now this, I'll portion out and eat over four or five days approximately. Wow, we got people from Germany as well. I mean, more people from Germany. Netherlands also, Ontario, Canada. Hello, barbecue with Neil. Nice. Who do you stretch? What are these questions? Who do I stretch? Is that some kind of code word for something? Philadelphia. I need to try an authentic Philly, Philly steak sandwich someday. All right. The box of rice sits out for another 30 minutes till it cools down and then I'll put it in the fridge. Can I try rice? Yes, by all means. I mean, I didn't think you'd want to. When the, when the wife asks for a bite, how can one refuse? Very easily, actually. No, not at all. Do you want to show? No, no. She does not want to eat on camera. Oh, from Singapore. Hello. We were in Singapore last year for a few days. Uh, mm, very good. My fried rice is getting the approval. Yummy. So mm. now you'll eat it. Yeah. I should make all the dishes on camera. Hey. You know I'm soft pot for fried rice. You sure you don't eat some now? Mm -hmm. I did. Yum. As long as the people you cook for enjoy your food, that's all that matters. Ain't that right? Well, that duck really works in it. Yeah. Smoked duck fried rice. Done and dusted. I guess this will now be food for two days. What else do you cook? I mean, I can cook anything. Almost. Within reason. That is humanly possible by me. Shall we make the vegetables now? How's the weather in Pakistan? I don't know. I live in Bombay. I can tell you how the weather is here. It's hot. But in Pakistan, I have no idea. I'm going to assume it's similar. Hello, Venom. What happened to keto? Quit keto five years ago. Uh, just was not a sustainable way of living for me. Uh, skincare routine, nothing. Just good genetics and washing my face with not too many products. So do you do desserts? I don't generally do desserts, but I can if required. I'm not very good because I don't like following a recipe. I like to cook with intuition. So no real measurements, but I had to change all that when I started keto. Hey carbs, so sorry for your loss. I can't imagine what you're going through, but uh, love and strength to you. What's your profession? This is my profession. You watching this video, YouTube showing you ads and then me getting paid from those ads. That is my profession. I make videos and that is my job. All right, guys, shall we make the vegetables? It's time. Let's do it. Broccoli, mushroom and pok choy in oyster sauce. All right. Let's get you guys a nice pan view again. All right, let's get you back. Okay, you can kind of see the pan now. We'll give it a slight tilt. Superb. All right, there we go. Great, let's get the pan on the stove. All right. Now we need a little bit of oil. Again, not too much oil required. Let's just get a little to get going. Now, if you're wondering what I'm doing, I deep fried some stuff in this oil and now I'll slowly reuse this oil for 
cooking and because otherwise I mean I can't throw all this oil away you know that always I find that a little like like I find it a little odd when all the cooking channels every time they deep fry something there's like a whole new set of oil that is perfectly like crystal clear I'm like what are you guys doing with all your oil and your leftovers and stuff because it like I just can't get myself to throw away like perfectly good oil or like perfectly good food I just have to find a way to use it up some way or the other one way or the other all right so in this recipe as well we're gonna have some we're gonna start with some ga ginger ginger very delicious I want that lovely flavor of ginger in my uh, oyster sauce vegetables so get that ginger in oh look at it now if you're wondering why that's foaming up that's because it's got bacon fat in it as well you'll find out soon enough what we deep fried which has bacon fat and of course garlic as much as I can put in here excellent now in go the mushrooms in go the broccoli and in goes the pop choy and now we fry obviously this pan is a little small but We'll manage. It's a good mix. And of course, then we need this sauce. Favorite chicken recipe is Hainanese chicken rice. I could eat it every day. Oh, that ginger, that garlic. Yum. The mushrooms getting caramelized. Now, I'm just going to... Just let the veggies steam in their own thing. What was the first vegetable? What was the last vegetable? Yeah, pok choy. It's a, like a um, it's like a Chinese cabbage kind of thing. It's really good. Hello, Karen. No worries. Hello, Sh Shana. Thank you for buying the books, really appreciate it. Isn't it too little fried rice for 5 days? So, I made the fried rice with 150 grams of raw rice. So, the way I count it is 30 grams of raw rice every day. That's as much rice as I have. I have more protein with each meal, so I will have more fish. So, I'll have like 100 grams of fish. Maybe, I think the rice will be about 100 grams each day maybe 120 if I'm really hungry and uh, I'll have about 100 grams of vegetables so my general plate weight I try and keep it under 400 grams on a daily basis that's another way to sort of calorie count of course it, it doesn't work with like super high calorie items but it is a sort of hack that I've learned hello to everyone joining in I didn't chop any vegetables because they were pre-chopped so the mushrooms were sliced the broccoli florets were separated and the pok choy was also separated and kept so no chopping required because I didn't want to chop it on the live stream all right you can see the vegetables have the color has changed completely and they've released some liquid oh this smells lovely 
Oh yeah. So I'll give it another minute or so. Now mix this up because this so this has got corn flour for those who are coming late. Ooh, it's hot. For those who have arrived late, this has got oyster sauce, soya sauce, mirin, sesame oil, beef stock, and corn flour. And this is going to thicken up and become our sauce. Um, 170 grams of protein is a fair amount because uh, 100 grams of a chicken breast is 31 grams of protein. So if you have one full chicken breast, that's 45 grams for an entire chicken breast approximately. So if you eat two full chicken breasts in a day, that's 90 grams of protein. 170 means you have to have another two chicken breasts so you have like 140 grams then yes uh, 170 is a lot like honestly i would think that's too much unless you are like a bodybuilder and you are six feet tall or you're a fairly tall well-built person uh but yeah you should have your own cooking book i already have a cookbook it's a keto cookbook hopefully someday i'll have a non-keto cookbook as well but yeah all right let's nice this is good Let's get you guys back in the zone. Oh, hot. Yeah, now we're going to pour this. There we go. Turn the heat up. Give this a nice stir. Lovely. Very nice. I'm just going to cook till this thickens up. Now just let it cook. Very simple. Do I drink alcohol sometimes? Actually, I drink quite a bit of alcohol these days because I'm in the food block. Okay. For me, it is quite a bit of alcohol compared to what I used to drink back in the day, which was not much at all. Oh, yes. It's already thickening up. Yum. Oh, it's darkening also. Look at the color changing. Look at the sauce color. It's become so much darker. And look at it, it's starting to thicken up. Lovely. Yeah, you can see it starting to thicken around the sides. Look at that. Okay. I'm going to let it cook, turn the heat a bit down, get the spoon and taste, so I know how salty it is. Okay. Mm. Needs to reduce a little bit more, so that it thickens a little more, the salt becomes a little more concentrated. I'm going to throw a little pepper in. And of course, a little bit of yum yum. Just a little bit of yum yum. MSG. Actually, I didn't need to do that because there's already probably MSG in the stock cube. Anyway, I just put a little bit. It was more for like the camera. Okay, this is looking really good. Vegetables are nice. Broccoli looks like it's still got a bit of bite. I'm going to turn the flame down. I'm going to cover it. Just give it two minutes to cook. 
perfect guess who's come back for fried rice i guess the fried rice is definitely gonna not gonna last it's very good it's very tasty you can tell them now sorry it's very good it's okay i'll make some fresh white rice tomorrow plain rice to go with the vegetables and the fish she can enjoy the fried rice i'm just eating a few bites you can finish it now i'm double dipping if we live together and it's just you and me eating so yeah but bacteria do that ah uh, it's fine our bodies have acclimatized themselves to the bacteria anyway let's see if this is i think this is done now yeah looks nice and thick is that a sauce yeah it's oyster sauce mm -hmm. it's veggies and oyster sauce so i can get some good nutrition can do a little more just take the box and go you can eat finish the fried rice fine i'm being banished i didn't banish you i just told you to take the fried rice with you all right last taste that's delicious yeah love it it's going to be amazing oh yeah for those who missed the fried rice this is what it looks like smoked duck and egg fried rice with some peas in it uh and yeah made with japanese short grain rice this is i guess my meal for well actually it's still my meal for four days at least uh, Most likely, I'll eat it for two days. She'll eat it for one day. We'll make three meals out of it. Okay. Cool. So now, these veggies are done. I'm gonna just turn the lid, put the gas off. Actually, why don't you guys have a good look at it? Now? Wait. Let's give you a proper look at the veggies. There you go. So now you can properly see the vegetables in oyster sauce. Like I said, I like to get a decent amount of vegetables in my diet. So I've got some broccoli here, some uh, mushrooms, and some pok choy. And if you want a good look at the fried rice as well. like a proper look from the front camera there you go you can have a look at the fried rice little bits of egg and a whole bunch of yum stuff so this is all for tomorrow this is not for today this is all for tomorrow now we have one more thing to cook Hold on. Okay, the veggies are done. Now one thing left, and that is the fish. And now I need to get a pan, and we're just gonna pan fry the fish. You eat late like me. I actually only eat late because uh, I'm live streaming. Otherwise, I generally finish eating by like. Uh, 8:39 latest, and then I'm done. And uh, yeah, let's get the fish out. So here we have our fish that has been marinated. Actually, you know what? I am going to just use this pan because I don't want to wash any more dishes. So I'm actually going to take the lid off, let this cool down quickly. And then the same pan because this is this is fish that doesn't need to be like seared, it just needs to be cooked through. So less 
less dishes i mean anyway i took out so many dishes because i did mise en place which i don't normally do but since i was doing a live stream i was like you know got to be a little professional all right fish is here fish has been marinated in soya sauce mirin and sesame oil now this is a shark fish shark fish yes but i think it's a local kind of shark fish that is not endangered or i don't know cuz yeah they wouldn't sell it if it because this is sold on like a major company website like they would not be doing any fishy business so to speak so technically their business is fishy all right to clean clean up as i go as well and drink some water and stay hydrated yes water water oops should put this back in the freezer all right water Oh yeah so i'm pretty sure this is some small shark fish the reason i actually bought it is because it was being sold as a as a fillet as opposed to with bones but of course now that i've cut it into smaller fillets i felt like there are some bones in it so i will have to figure out tomorrow when i eat it what it's like so once again i'm going to need another box or boxes so we can transfer the vegetables into the fridge so i want to start doing that oh it smells good huh it smells really good oh yeah yum The smell is incredible. How was your day? Good. Hello from Mauritius. Ah, let's get rid of the. How is the family? Family is good. Okay, I'm gonna put this in two boxes. more take out containers just make sure i don't drop anything perfect Almost got it. Ah, uh, hold on. Quickly. Ah, save the mess. Excellent. Now these are going to cool. And now it's time to make the fish. That sauce tastes good. All right. Thank you those veggies are delicious. Let's get on with the fish. Now let's just hope this is not turn into scrambled fish. Let's go. All right, get the pan back on. It's already warm. Uh Oops. Let's get the pan back on. Okay. and let's just get the fish in 
Pretty simple. Okay. Spread them out across the pan. This is mainly because I'm too lazy to make another, get another dish dirty. Alright. You know what? Let's make our life even easier. Let's let the fish steam. And now it'll steam and fully cook and I won't need to flip the fish and break it and spoil it. And I just need to cook it all the way through I don't need to like slow cook it or anything so four minutes five minutes stops we're done yes you can ask questions how long would you this take if you this wasn't recorded live just normal at home uh, I'd probably take half the time because I would just I would like take one hour the whole meal would be done I think one hour maximum yeah because I also ate on this live stream but the actual dishes that we made one hour maximum is all we take Check it out, the fish has released its water. I mean, I'm gonna flip them a little. Let's see, let's see how delicate they are. Because fish is normally quite delicate. I mean, this doesn't seem to be very delicate fish. Yeah, it looks like pretty sturdy fish. Like you know some fish is like really delicate and it like breaks apart very quickly. Yeah, this is that's pretty solid. Interesting. We're turning them. There's some liquid. Okay, I, I think the fish is cooked. I mean, I'm mostly just trying to dry out the the liquid in the pan, but the fish itself is cooked. Yeah, it's done. It's done. I mean, I don't see the point of cooking it anymore. Check it out. That's the fish. It's just cooked. And I'll eat it with the rice and the veggies tomorrow. As I said, look at the... Uh, look at the structure of the fish. Like if I can show you a piece here, look at this, see, so it's it's got a fillet here, like this is the center and look, it, oh, it does break apart quite easily, look, oh look at that, oh, it looks nice and yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I mean just as a simple and it's not focusing in I mean it's fish it smells fishy all right folks <sighs> fish is good 
veggies done fried rice done there are 102 people on this live stream holy moly thank you for being here first of all i appreciate it i hope you've enjoyed the cooking the eating the other cooking and uh, happy to hey mohit momo is back what's up buddy good to see you alcohol is wrong if you don't like it don't drink it all right we will have sorry dipti i can't help it it's fish dipti is not very pleased with the fish smell anyway all right we are going to have a few minutes of conversation before we call it a night and of course if you can see the live uh, the like button do smash it oof i like your synthetic wig this is my hair but yeah so i mean this fish uh recipe can be made with any fish because you just marinate it with soy sauce sesame oil mirin pan fry it bake it in the oven either is fine you know uh it's fish it's easy to cook hey ghostly fret i'm so glad to hear that glad the keto recipes helped you and i especially love that you like the band so thank you uh i do not speak german though my wife does speak a bit of german thank you hoor i really appreciate it before the orange i ate full dinner scrambled egg toast duck breast and some corn salad and before that i cooked my dinner the eggs and the toast and stuff so it's been a long live stream today can i repeat the recipe orally yeah definitely just for those who have joined late all right let's start at the beginning scrambled eggs is two eggs beaten in a bowl with a little bit of milk and salt a knob of butter in the pan pour in the eggs cook them scramble slowly done toast put butter put it on a pan let it toast on one side flip it over finish toasting the other side remove corn salad uh butter and uh, cream cheese like little bit of each in a bowl hot corn in that corn kernels um raw onion raw spring onion coriander lime salt and you can put some chili powder if you like it spicy pepper also uh mix 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 good to go um what else the fried rice fry spring onion oh duck fat duck fat render it out add in spring onion white garlic ginger no just garlic peas rice duck cubes chopped egg and finish with spring onion and some soy sauce uh for the vegetables we made a mix of beef stock oyster sauce soy sauce mirin and sesame oil and corn flour six things uh mix 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 fry in oil garlic ginger then the vegetables then pour that liquid in reduce to the consistency you like done and finally fry the fish done name a car for an edit ferrari show proof of bmw show the keys i do not own a car well hopefully that uh, covers everything you guys asked for any final questions hit me we got 5 minutes more before the clock hits 11 pm and my watch tells me that it's bedtime so yeah let's get those final questions in and a big thank you from me as always for being on the live stream and watching me cook and yeah hopefully i was worth your time and of course do check all the new recipe videos on the channel i really appreciate it uh, if you're watching videos try and watch the entire video that always helps so my channel is a food channel with a focus on indian dishes specifically meat and seafood and also taking fun indian vegetarian dishes and adding meat to them that's what my channel is currently about where what are the calorie count of a meal depends on what the meal is you'll need to manually calculate it 
Thank you, David. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Eden. Really appreciate it. I am from Mumbai, India. In one of your other lives, can you make tikka masala? Uh, sure, why not? I've already made a tikka masala on the channel. Just look for Headbangers Kitchen tikka masala and you will find my recipe. So it's already there. Just watch it. Tikka masala is actually quite easy to make. Not a very difficult recipe. Thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. How about a recipe around beets? So if beets, so right now my, I mean, I can do it on a live stream, but mostly with beets, I would just like either bake them in the oven or boil them and eat them like that. Are there vegetarian versions too? No, but there are about a hundred vegetarian recipes on the channel already, which you can check out and enjoy. But going forward, I'm all about the meat. Hello, Jacob mate. You're looking like brother of Brock Lesnar WWE. I would uh, like to take that as a compliment, I hope. Are you vegetarian? No, I am not a vegetarian in the slightest. Thank you, Charlotta, for being here. I appreciate it. You look like Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas or whatever festival you follow. Thank you, Zoravar. I'm glad to hear that. Hello, Vedanta. What is urgent favorite food? I don't know. Thank you, Mohit. See you next time. Curd rice well with meat. I already did, right? So I had a show called Bacon Tadka on the channel, which is still there. Um, and I did bacon dahi rice in that. Ah, I love it. Tiffany says, you, you're gay. Tiffany, uh, I think it's Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. If you're trying to say that I am gay. And I mean... It would be a big shock for my wife if she found out I was gay. Nothing wrong there. Yeah, nothing wrong with being gay. Can you share hot dog kept on your t-shirt? Sure, here you go. What is my favorite food? I think uh, Bangkok duck rice and a good ribeye steak with some triple cooked chips. Favorite black metal bands? Uh, I love Isan, Emperor, Dimu Borgir, Old Man's Child. Those are the bands I sort of uh, really love. From the newer bands, I like MGLA. He's, na he's not gay. Stop being mean. You know, don't worry. Uh, I couldn't care less if someone called me gay. There's nothing wrong with being gay. It's not an insult that you think it is. Uh, did you give up on keto? Yes, like four years ago. Uh, you like curry? every now and then I love it so many people just randomly saying gay you know gay also means happy right and yeah I am happy and gay ever tried Indian food if yes what is that I am Indian so I tried a lot of Indian food what is your wife's favorite food probably too many to mention Favorite egg recipe? I do love a good masala omelette. Wanna hear a story? No, because the live stream is coming to an end now. <laughs> Suddenly, like there's an influx of a whole bunch of people who seem to have been swiping up on YouTube shorts and have hit upon my live stream. Yeah, please flash us, daddy. Seriously, what part of the internet have I rolled into? On what basis did you judge the Wakan metal battle? Um, I think there was a lot of factors. So sound, performance, songwriting, uh, stage presence, musicianship, uh, all of it, the whole package, like, you know, was it a band that I would want to see again? So a lot of, a uh, lot of factors in the judging. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, you had butter chicken for the first time. Lovely. Wow, we've really like. Uh, yes, I really like the band. That's why I mean, look, I may not have like, be like, I may not go home and listen to their songs over and over again. But from the bands that competed, I thought they were the best band. Gay daddy, you gotta love that. A happy father. What more could anyone ask for? Better than a sad dad, right? No, we we have just stumbled upon the the really sad part of the internet, which is not bad as long as they see the ads. I'll get money from their useless views, which is cool. In which case, they're not useless; they're useful actually. But you know what? Fake accent, okay? I mean, I don't understand why anyone would fake an accent. It's okay. I can moderate my own. Did you compete on Channel V? Uh, actually, I did. Like, it was in two thousand and five, and then again in two thousand and nine. I want to say or seven. I won't even say it's dirty mind. It's just like. Really, you're doing a character. That's why the fake accent. No, see, if this would be a fake accent, cause this is a character. You see, this is an accent, but this is really miss my normal voice. I speak like this. I don't need to put on a fake accent, unless you want me to talk like this. And you think this is how Indian people talk? We have some weirdos on here. I should just start uh, putting users in timeout now. Wow, we have some real, real weird people here. I am, I am, which is hilarious. But I am from India. Okay, guys. As much as I love this live stream, and we have ninety-three people watching, which is insane. I don't think I've had this many people on a live stream ever. So first of all, thank you all for being here. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I will have a new video for you tomorrow, maybe day after the day after that. Just visit the channel, watch all the videos you have missed, and enjoy the content. And uh, I will see you very soon. Until then, cheers and keep cooking. So yeah, good night. Have a great evening. Bye bye.